Welcome back everyone to our Working with Plotly series. This is episode eight, where we're gonna be examining the solutions to the challenge questions. If you didn't see the challenge questions, please pause the video and navigate to episode seven, where we discuss them and you get more information on the challenge questions, although you're gonna see them coming up because we're gonna jump right into the solutions and instead of typing each solution in, I'm going to add them and then analyze how it can be solved with Plotly. So let's get started. All right, we're back in our Jupyter Notebook. Now, we have the challenge introduction. I did leave a tip here. We're gonna come and scroll down to the following, the repeated section of the questions, just so we can kind of see and separate the episodes that we've gone through. To start, our first challenge question was to find and graph the top three largest states by the number of solar plants, so who had the most number of solar plants, and to use a bar chart. This is a fairly simple setup using Plotly. Again, we're looking to use a bar chart here. If you used other charts or added some customizations in in addition to the bar chart, that's fantastic. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add the solution in and we're gonna go through it. So let's take a look at how this can be done. All right, now you may see these import statements. I'm gonna keep them in just because we're building these charts or these plotly visualizations right here. So we're gonna keep these graph objects in. I will also add a complete Jupyter notebook file with all of the import statements cleaned up because normally you want them added in at the top of your notebook. You don't want to be too repetitive, but the, for the purpose of this and for our working with Plotly challenge and solution, we're going to keep them in. The first things first is we're working with the following data set. Need to create a data frame. You also need to use the three largest. That's what we're looking for, the three largest. I'm using the pandas method of n largest, the top number, the three largest number of solar plants. So it's going within that column and taking the three largest values within that and creating a new data frame. Then we have to go through and actually build our plotly graph. We they call it the data. We're using the bar chart. So go from the graph objects, the bar chart we're using. Then we need to use our X and Y, the values for X and Y, state and number of solar plants. That's what we want graphed, X set to the state, Y set to the number of solar plants. Finally, we can plot it with the iPlot. Again, we're working within the Jupyter Notebook, so we can use the iPlot function. If you wanna bring it online, you can use the pi.iplot, the data that we have to graph, and to give it a file name. So we could run this, and we can see that we have a very simple bar chart, just to get you a little familiar with working and manipulating the data using pandas. If you use NumPy or other libraries, that is fantastic. This is just one method of grabbing the three largest values in a specific column of a data frame. Very simple, straightforward method. I hope that you guys didn't encounter too much trouble if you were trying to build this bar chart. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment below the video. Now moving on, let's jump into the second challenge question and solution. Okay, for our second challenge question, and I apologize if there was any confusion, we don't want the Apple stock. This was actually remaining from the previous video that we changed to Tesla stock as well, since we're working with the Tesla data set, and that's what we are familiar with working with that from the time series. Now, within data science or computer science in general, we know that there are always multiple methods of, of solving a challenge or arriving at a solution. So how can we only use the year 2018? There are multiple methods of doing this, but we're gonna explore the following method. So I'm gonna add this in, and I apologize for the import statements. We can clean them up again. I'll have the final file with the import statements clean. And I'm actually going to remove this because what I did was a little bit of experimentation to arrive at the 199. So we're looking for the date column. And I did some experimentation and we could scroll through so we can see that upon visualizing this, we see that the date for 2018 ends at about 199 columns, 199 rows, excuse me. So what can we do to solve that to only use a data frame with 199 rows? We can add the following in. We have a new data frame created, dropping everything after 199. We have our import statements that we're gonna be working with. We can clean them up as well. And we're looking to plot with our time series. We used a scatter plot. Very simple method of working with data over time in a sequential order. So we can plot the X variable for the df.date, and we can set our Y to the test df of the closing price. Now we can also comment that out if we want, but to keep it in here to visualize, you can use the other values as well. 
We're looking for the closing price of 2018 for the Tesla data. Pretty straightforward method. The more challenging aspect working with this is just to manipulate the data. The Plotly implementation here of the scatter plot, once you have the data ready, becomes very simple and straightforward. So using our data creation of our scatter plot, the DF date for X and our closing for Y. And similar to the bar chart, we can actually give it a file name. So I'm going to grab this. So we don't have to retype it. We are calling our plot of the data. So our creation here of the graph. And I want to give it a file name, but I'm going to call it the Tesla 2018. And it's not necessary because we're not bringing it online. If we're using the pi.i plot, you can, but we can run it now. So let's run that. And there we have it. We have the stock price for the closing price creation for the year 2018. And with Plotly, you always have the benefit of exporting it to Plotly to experiment and visualize it with it further. All right. So we are now on challenge number three, where we wanted to graph the county from the following data set with the highest population and the corresponding state. Then we also wanted to see if you can make the county within the state a specific color. So the first part you're looking to go into the data set. We can explore if we click on it and we want to see which county of the data set has the highest population. You can take a look through the data, but what we also can do is to manipulate the data. I'm going to add this in. We can read and create the data frame from this data here. We're using the raw data and we can also create a data frame to look at the total population of the data frame here for the largest number. So if we run this, we will have the following information and we can actually visualize it. So we see top DF. Let's just display that it is only one value. And we can see that the county name would be Los Angeles County. We have our state name as California with the total population. Now from here, we know that the state we're looking at is California. So we could go through and manipulate data, create new data frames even further, or as we've done previously in this series, we have graphed the state. So we're looking to graph California and we also want to implement a county with a specific color. I'm going to add this in and we're going to go through this information. So similar to what we did earlier, we're taking the main setup here of creating a data frame. We're also using the scope as California because we want that state name. It's going to graph this county within it because it's within the state. So we don't have to worry about that. We're also taking the population, our values and our FIPS. Remember those codes, the FIPS codes for the counties. And we have to create a color scale. Remember, you need at least the number of colors of for the counties with the color scale. And following this, we're going to get into these comments in a second. Following this, we have to create our figure. Remember, we are working with the Plotly figure factory. So we have to create our figure the create choropleth. That's the type of map that we're working with, setting our values, our FIPS and our scope, working with the color scale. See, there's the parameters that have to go into the figure creation. You can also find optional parameters if you explore the Plotly documentation and just to give it some basic outlines and title with California. Now we can run this and we'll see the following visualization. Give it a second. And there we have it. We have it based on the specific colors in our color scheme. You can, since we're looking to make this county a specific color, you can actually, if you want to go through and remove everything, but there's quite a few to click on because we're actually just looking for the Los Angeles County to make that one specific color. And you can do process of elimination. You would be changing the following color here to change the county. We could also base it on a scale. And that's what I did to solve this challenge for number three, to make the county a specific color. I'm going to use the following color scale because what I would want to do is use the bidding endpoints. Now bidding endpoints is another option working with Plotly. It's basically setting uh, sending numbers implicitly. That's going to define real intervals to use as bins. So you can really set the color scale to have the same number of colors as the number of bins. So we have the bidding endpoints set to our values here using the color scale. You also want to explore it further. I left the comment in here. This is just an example color scale. Uh, I experimented with a few colors, but just to get the point of cross, we can have 
the following comment removed as well because we have to actually set the bidding endpoints to bidding endpoints to use them. And then we can run this and we're going to see that it's going to be created on a range. So this is going to basically set that interval. Now it might be aesthetically pleasing if you change other colors to work around this, but I wanted to really have the darkest color of the intensity and we can select these. Now we have it as a specific color. We can select these three and we can see the range or the counties that we're looking through between this range. This is really what we're looking at, the Los Angeles County, to graph that within our graph here for the state of California. So if you did this another way, I would be more than happy to take a look and see it. I love to see other ideas and experimentations to obtain these values and to solve these challenges. So please feel free to share them. It's always a great way and method of learning to examine other methods of implementations. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this challenge and solving these challenges that we have just went through. If you guys would like to discuss it any further, if you ran into any bugs or you want to discuss any methods used, again, please feel free to comment in the video. Keep an eye out for some new upcoming series. We have some great material and information in the works. As always, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It is a fantastic way to stay up to date with in the world of data science. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. It was a pleasure working through this series with you, and I will see you in the next one.